not a fan then. <laughs> no, no, I'm not, no I'm not a Love Island man, no. <laughs> Welcome to World Cup Gossip, episode one. And on episode one, we've got you, Kev. Kevin <laughs> Kilban, everyone. Kevin, welcome. You just arrived in Moscow how I many am. days? Uh, I've just been here since last night. I'm already bagged down. My bag's not arrived. I'm waiting for that to come in later on. I've not got my toothpaste, so mm -hmm. don't come, come too close. I'm edging it. away, yeah. I'm edging away. The World Cup wouldn't be the same without a scandal, a story straight away. And then we had it yesterday. Yeah. The Spanish manager. Yeah. A couple of days before they go out and play their opening game <laughs> against Portugal and he gets fired. I understand the Spanish FA, I understand the, the yeah. logic behind it. I did, only because, it, can you imagine being put in that position where your manager's not told you he's actually negotiating with another team and you're like, hang on a minute, this is the biggest thing that we, we've got for four years. This only comes around every four years. Yeah. This is the biggest thing in, in Lopetegui's career as well, don't forget, yet he's considered actually speaking to someone else great, Real Madrid brilliant, but why couldn't it have been done? Why couldn't he have spoken to the Spanish FA and said, look, Real Madrid have been on, can I negotiate with them, get the permission, and then say, well, I'll tell you what, nothing will be announced till after the World Cup, let's leave it on, on, the, on the down low, we'll sort it out when we, when we get back. And would you say their opening game is against Portugal? How do you think Ronaldo's feeling right now with all of that? Well, is got, he sitting in his hotel room rubbing his hands it's like, this give is great? Boost, hasn't it? It's got to give them a boost, hasn't it? It's got to give um, Portugal a boost. I, I, I didn't give Portugal a, a, a chance. I really didn't in this game. I think Spain, the way that they've been playing, the way they've gone through qualification, the friendlies, they look like they've got a really settled side. Uh, I didn't give them a chance. Now all of a sudden, you've, opens you've opened the door. Yeah, but you had kind of a same similar situation. Did we? Did yeah, we? We, <laughs> that Roy Keane situation. Yeah, well, a lot tell was everyone. Big well, that, that, it probably does have a similar sort of feel. Yeah, mm -hmm. different from the fact is that of course it wasn't. I mean, we, it was our best player. He'd it, it, it get in any World Eleven at that time, Roy, and uh, we fancied our chances strongly. Um, we had an opening game then against Cameroon, who Cameroon were the African champions. Mm -hmm. We're less than a week out, and this happened. It all flared up. And selfishly, Alex, I think myself personally, all I wanted to do as a kid growing up, literally all I wanted to was play for Ireland in a World mm -hmm. Cup. So I had to think about it in my own head. Look, this is me one chance. I might not get another chance, and I didn't get another chance in my career. I've got to think of myself and focus on what I'm going to do. Let's talk about England because yeah. there's a lot of positive comments coming out about the England camp, how they're conducting themselves. Well, it, how they're conducting themselves, I think it is great. I think it has been quite open. I think Gareth, Gareth Southgate has recognised the pressure that all the players are under and whether you're Eric Dyer, whether you're Jordan Henderson or whether you're Harry Kane, one of the bigger players, mm -hmm. the message you're getting, oh, he shouldn't be playing, he should be playing. And that's getting relayed back to you from your families, but also you're reading it now. It's because you're getting, you're getting the, those instant hits straight to your phone. And mm -hmm. I think that puts added pressure on you. But then do you see a different side because the players are actually using social media kind of in a positive way, yeah, showing yeah. those stories about from Ashley Young, you know, when he was a kid in that England shirt, dreaming of playing yeah. in the World Cup. So then that shows fans a different side. We've heard that they've had games rooms, they want to watch Love Island, that sort of thing. Did you that, have that wouldn't, be, that wouldn't be my cup of tea, yeah, but I've got to say that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> not a fan then, <laughs> No, I'm not, not, I'm not a Love Island man, no, I'm uh, not. Well, no. they've got some Playstations. Did you play consoles? Bit, 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 bit of Playstation, yeah. Um, again... Uh, Wait, what console did you have? What was it, Sega Mega Drive, <laughs> Dreamcast? I'm not that old. I'm not that old. I'm not I that had old. a Sega Mega Drive. Yeah, Pro Eva or FIFA. They were the two that we would have always played. It would have been, it would have been the football games, yeah. Um, Lots of different fans in the background. Look at them already yeah. posing for a photo There's my there. boys, the Peruvians over there as well. I've got a big <laughs> you, you soft spot flight, for those Peru fans, yeah. <laughs> and this is what the World Cup is all about. It's about the, the fans collectively mingling together. And uh, mm -hmm. I think we're going to get a special, a special World Cup because of that. There's been a little bit of negativity coming out here um, regarding the host, but personally, it, it's about the fans and it? it's about mm -hmm. the fans and the teams. That is what a World Cup's about, regardless of where it is. And I think we're going to get a special, special World Cup, yeah. We will be bringing you all the news and everything that is going on around the World Cup. But we want you to get involved at home. Send in your comments. What do you want to hear from our guests? What do you want us to talk about? Today, we're setting the tone, but in future, it's all from you.